In our last architectural photography video, we looked at this photo where I showed how we combined a bracketed set of five images, took that into Photoshop, and then brought back the overexposed exterior, combined that with the best bits of the interior, brightened up the shadows as well. We're gonna carry on working on exactly the same project. I'm gonna select a new image for us to work on. That's gonna be this one here. But this time, rather than going to Photoshop and using layers to bring back the best of that exposure, we're gonna create our finished image inside of Lightroom. So first of all, why have I shot a bracketed set of five photographs? What's the benefit to us as photographers to actually shoot differently exposed images? Well, in a nutshell, the brightness values that are contained within a scene that we try and capture on our camera sensor, oftentimes it can't all be captured in one frame. So for example, if we open up this brightest exposure here and I zoom into the darker part of the photo over here, this is looking really good in terms of exposure through in this dining area here and through in this area here. But if we look at the brightest area, of the photos here where the sun is spilling through it's completely overexposed and then if I jump to one of the darker exposures here this one's potentially a little bit too dark but let's say this exposure here for the exterior this is so much better but now everything inside the building is looking far too dark and yes of course you could come in and start bumping up the shadows dropping the highlights down and trying to fix your photo that way but as you all know if you work with shadows and you try and boost up the exposure from very dark shadows you can see in the very darkest parts, this TV area here, you're starting to introduce a lot of noise into your photo, and that's not a good look. And that's where Merge to HDR comes in in Lightroom, because basically we can take these five photos and smush them together into one power photo. Just one beefy DNG file that's gonna contain all of the exposure data from all of this bracketed set just in one single frame. So to do that, all we do is select them all, right click, come to Photo Merge and HDR. Of course, we can press Control H just to do this as a hotkey. And if this is a workflow that you choose to adopt, I'd recommend stacking your bracketed sets first and then automating a batch process on this HDR feature. You don't really wanna be coming in wasting time doing it on an individual basis. My computer's relatively speedy, but it still takes a while for Lightroom to crunch these numbers. So just set it off doing them all, go and make yourself a cup of coffee. And so now here we have our Lightroom HDR photo. And if I expand our stack, you can see that our original photos still exist within the stack. And you'll also notice that between these images and this one here, we have reverted to the original geometry and the original crop. And whenever I have a slight pan left or right on my camera, and that creates the horizontal lines to start converging off into the distance, I actually like to come in and correct that with the guided transform. So if I just turn on my guides here, you can see that I've drawn two verticals, one here, one here, and two horizontals as well. So we've squared up the photo nicely. And yes, I'm well aware if I had have had a tilt shift lens, I would have been able to frame up my shot pretty much like this in camera, but I didn't. And so we're gonna have to just copy these settings over to our HDR version, and I'm happy to do that. So all I need to do is come to sync, check none to turn all of the synchronization off and just select crop and my transformations. And now I just synchronize and like a fool, I've synchronized the wrong thing. I've synchronized the HDR version over to the other one. So let's press control Z to undo that and make sure one of the original five is actually selected and now come back to sync. We've got crop and transform still selected, click replace. And now we have the correct geometry on this file. So let's close our stack down and get to work on it. When we go through the merge to HDR inside of Lightroom, we have the option to turn on the auto settings. And that's gonna do a couple of things I don't really like, which is drop the highlights massively and boost the shadows up. And I appreciate what it's trying to do, you know, bring back the highlights in the image, also bring up the shadows, but I don't really like this look because it starts to look a little bit too much like a faux HDR picture. You know, that nasty look that everyone thought looked really great when HDR first came out. No, it's too much. And so I'm gonna reduce the amount with which the highlights are applied, double click to reset the shadows. And now you can see all of a sudden we have a richness to the black here. Obviously it's a little bit too black, but when we had the shadows all the way up here, it was just too washed out. I don't really like that look. And so what I prefer to do is actually control the exposure in specific parts of the image using local adjustments. And as I'm going into this section, I see that I did actually already apply a couple of masks when I sent the initial proof through back 
back to my client. And as you guys know, watch my videos, the proof is what I'm sending to the client, which is the photo in a pretty good place, but not a polished finished state. And it's just good enough for them to get a sense of what the finished image can look like. And they can decide whether or not they want to invest in a license in that image. And that way I don't need to waste my time finessing an image that the client doesn't want and isn't wanting to pay for. But anyway, I'm actually just going to remove these and we're going to start again. So I'm going to delete mask two and we are also going to delete mask one, which was over here just to brighten this up. And now we have a much better indication of what the camera's sensor actually captured and just how much darker it is over here on this left hand side in this little alcove where the dining table is compared to how bright it is on the exterior. And so it's our job now using this HDR file to bring back all of that lovely data. So the first thing I'm going to do with an image like this when I'm assessing it is realize straight away the left half of the image is so much darker than the right half. And so a really quick fix for this is to grab new linear mask and that's going to allow us to drag from the left over towards the right. And so we're getting that nice feathering from 100%, 50% in the middle to zero on the right hand side. And now we can grab the exposure slider and you watch as I start to bring this up, we're starting to brighten the left hand side and we're getting a much better balance to the overall photo. I'm going to rename that so that we stay nice and organized. And if we want to, we can do a similar thing, but working in the opposite direction with exposure from the right hand side. So we can pull over from the right, grab the exposure and just start to control that. And if we toggle our masks off and then on, already we're getting a much better balanced exposure from this photo. The next area I want to tackle is this bright area where the sun is actually coming through and illuminating these chairs here and a little bit on the floor. And so I'm gonna create a new mask and this time I'm gonna create a radial gradient. And the linear and radial gradients, I really like them because you can make them very wide and you'll have a nice natural fall off in intensity from that center point out to the edge. And the larger we can make this feathering transition, the less likely it is that the eye can actually pick up that there's an adjustment that's going on. Obviously, the smaller an adjustment is, and you start making changes, it's very evident exactly where that adjustment is, but if you make it larger and the distance from the center to the edge allows that taper, that fall off to happen more naturally, people viewing your work are less likely to see that you've actually got an adjustment in place. Okay, that was just for demonstration purposes. I'm not really wanting to drop the exposure too much on this one. I think grabbing the highlights and bringing those down is gonna help us a little more here. Okay, that's not too bad, but I've still got these hot spots through here and I'm gonna just show you a different way to handle those. I'm gonna come in and select luminance range this time and I'm gonna come over here and just click on our luminance range. And obviously luminance is just another word for brightness. And so this particular mask is allowing us to select pixels based on their brightness value. And so because we are wanting to darken down these very bright areas here, this is actually a really good option for us. And I'm gonna come over now and I'm gonna start making a couple of adjustments. We're gonna bring the exposure down. And again, just bring that highlights down. And you can see here, if I drop the highlights all the way down, you can see that we're bringing back all of that detail here, but we're also starting to muddy things up and you're getting a bit of a funny transition area between the darker bit where the shadow is on the wood and the highlights. You can just see that little transition line there. So I don't like to push things too far and too aggressively. I want this to look as natural as possible. If we want to, we can actually control the range of the luminance. And so we can just bring this slider down and the tighter we make this little area here, we're just saying to Lightroom, just make those adjustments in the very brightest pixels. And that's just gonna tighten that mask up. But if it's starting to muddy certain areas like the brickwork out here, I think that's just getting a little bit washed out. What you can do is actually then subtract from the mask that we created. So in this case, I might just grab a brush, maybe have quite a strong flow here just to get this done relatively quickly. And I'm just gonna paint that away from the brickwork. And if there's other areas where you think, well, it's just washing things out just a little bit, like on the wall here, that's just getting a little bit too dark, potentially the bottom of the sky there, you can just remove that mask from the areas you don't want it. And as you hover your mouse over the mask, you actually get to see where that mask is affecting. Okay, let's have a little look at what we've done by turning the masks off and back on. And you can see what a dramatic change we've made already. This is our before and this is our after. I started off well with my organization, but it's getting away on me already. So let me just come in and rename these masks. 
So using this masking approach, you can just keep refining your image. So for example, this little alcove here is far too dark for my liking. And so I can just draw a radial gradient that kind of bleeds over again, again, using that principle of just heavily feathering your effect. And now I can just grab my exposure and bring it up. We might also want to bring the shadows up slightly and make sure that our blacks stay at pure black just by bringing that down. And if we've made adjustments to settings here that we particularly like, so for example, we're brightening up darker areas, what we can do is actually add to this mask. So for instance, the sofa corner that's in the bottom right here, that's very dark, so we may want to brighten that up. So all we need to do is just open this section here and just click add so we can add to the mask and then we can choose what type of masking we want. And in this case, I'm just gonna stick with radial gradients, click and drag over this area. And there we go, we've brightened up this area as well. We could grab a brush so we could be a little bit more precise and we could paint into this area. But you can see straight away that the brush is very obvious where it's been because we don't have a smoother transition between where the effect is and where it falls off because we're painting it in. It's much more obvious and I don't really like that. And so I'm just gonna undo that, but I will still use the brush by changing the intensity of it to get this brickwork done quickly. And so I can actually just add that brush again, but this time I'm just gonna bring the flow and the density right back down. And now I can build that up just slightly more subtly. I won't paint too much in this time. Learn your lesson, Anthony. Don't go over the top of this. All right, let's see what this has done for us. So turn this off and turn it on. So we've just brightened up a couple of the areas that were just falling into too much darkness. Another nice thing that we can use masks for is actually controlling color casts. And so you can see that the light's flooding through here, it's bouncing off the floor, which is catching the orangey yellow toning here and pumping that up onto the ceiling. And so we're getting a kind of orangey hue through the ceiling. And so we can fix that relatively easily just by grabbing another mask and I wanna work into a color range. And so I'm gonna click the color range mask option. And this time I'm gonna grab a sample over this area here and currently that is selecting a lot of extra areas and that's where our subtraction can come in so we can take away from the areas we don't want it. But just for now, just so we can see what's going on, let me just grab the saturation slider and start to bring that down. And if I take that all the way to the left, you can see that we have completely neutralized the color cast up here. Obviously it's affecting other areas that we don't want it to affect, but you get the idea. This is quite a powerful approach. Now I mentioned this in the last video as well, but I just wanna stress this. Some people are very, very afraid to have any color cast in their photos. Like it's something that should be destroyed and eradicated from your photo. But that's not the case because as I explained, the color cast up here does actually exist for a legitimate reason. The light is bouncing off of the warm toned floor here and then bouncing up here. It's part of the environment. If you get rid of it completely, your photo starts to look pretty unrealistic and it's also not a very true representation of the environment. And so having too much of the color cast, you know, I don't want that either. And so I just wanna get it to the sweet spot where I'm reducing it, but not losing it completely. And then when I'm happy with the look on the walls, I'm just gonna come in and subtract from the mask. I can do that in several ways. So I can grab a linear radiant and just pull that up from the bottom and that's gonna remove that effect from anywhere below this line here. So I may just pull that up slightly and just have a quick toggle of our before and our after, before and after. I may even create one more mask just to control the brightness just through this area. Let's do it really simply just with a radial mask, just pull that over there come to the highlights, just grab that and just bring it down to the left. Really quick, simple fix. Might create another mask just for the end of this couch here. So just drag a little radial gradient there, grab the shadows, play with those. So from being in shadow to just a little pop of light there, easy peasy. I notice I've got a couple of dust spots on my image, so I just wanna heal those up. I'll press T on my toolbar, and I just wanna come down here to visualize spots, and that's gonna be an easier way for me to actually see where those dust spots exist. But this one was visible to my eye right here, so I can click and remove that. There's one here just on the window, and I'll just come over and just fix up a couple of these off the wall. Okay, I think that'll do. Okay, let's see where we started and where we've got to. So if I press the backslash key on my keyboard, boom, that is our before. That is the merged HDR file without any adjustments done to it. 
and then bammo, we have our finished Lightroom version with the geometry corrected, the color cast controlled, but much more importantly, it's the luminosity areas which are controlled. And we can see that if we come to our masking option and we just toggle the masks off. And so this is the merged HDR image with the geometry corrected and global adjustments. So a slight dropping in the highlights, a little boost in the shadows, not too much else, but everything else that we've done like this, this is all done with our local masking. I wanted to keep this entire video inside of Lightroom and just demonstrate the masking features and the merge to HDR features of Lightroom. Extremely powerful, but I'm gonna put on screen now my finished version. And the first thing I've done is correct the geometric distortion on the lights. And the second thing I've done is just run my automated Luminar preset, which just tends to give the image a little bit more interest and a little bit more pop. If you'd like to see the process of how I did that, I'm gonna put the video on screen right now. You can click that and I'll see you in that video.